Welcome to The Advocate. Your panelists are here to discuss thought-provoking issues in an atmosphere of laughter and seriousness. Here, we call a spade a spade, and today we're here to remind you that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. In what I term the déjà vu effect of the Nigerian society, I'll be talking about the avoidance of future disasters in our country. Ruth talks about the increasing drug problem in Nigeria with heavy focus on meth. The saint with no halo, Kulelawal, is talking about a power shift in 2023 and Tonya ends with a conversation on corporate dressing. The Deja Vu Effects of the Nigerian Society Nigerians are a people that are stressed and broken. There is a different narrative every single day, which foretells of a terrible future of doom, uncontrolled violence, and unparalleled impunity across board. That is, from the corridors of power to the streets of the ordinary or average Nigerian. Oftentimes, we reference this future of total neglect and chaos, more like dub chop dog scenario, and we wonder when will we get there. The good news is, we are already there. Growing up in Festac in the 80s and 90s, residents of Ajegunle or Jo Okokomaiko looked up to Festac. It was a symbol of what we now know as Banana Island for the residents of that part of Lagos. It rivaled Surulere, and of course, the only difference between Ikoi, uh, from Ikoi rather, are the businesses, foreign missions, and other strategic infrastructure put up in Ikoi. While we lived there with pride, residents of neighboring communities looked on with envy. Residing in Festac was the ambition of this neighboring residents. Many years later, the nouveau riche of these communities all moved to Festac. With the mentality of their previous communities, they unwittingly unsettled the calm, opulence, and beauty of Festac. Pollution everywhere. Gutter started becoming choked. Festac became noisier. Drivers would leave the statutory parking spaces and park on pavements, and there came periodic floods after a heavy rain. An uncommon event a few years ago, drinking spots sprang up in this one-time residential environment of choice. And the old residents, particularly the older children who have made some money, started staying out of Festac longer to avoid the unbearable feeling of staying in Festac and eventually moved out of Festac. Now, Festac is a shadow of itself. If you were to visit Festac for the first time, you would not understand the glory that once existed. It feels like it has gone with the wind. Why do I call this unpleasant condition good news? We are already experiencing all what we assume is to come, unknowingly, and we are getting by. To prevent that unstable future of erratic violence, killings, and oppression, all we need to do is to think about now study our current situation and start working towards changing the narrative an event at a time so the question is what is happening now the original residents of festac refused to defend the integrity of their community when new residents started coming in these are residents who didn't experience the glory days of regular waste pickup flowing water and mutual respect among residents we allow those who don't know the history and the tradition of this community to take over. We then turn around and complain that things are not the same anymore. Well, you know that song. Standard of education has plummeted. Local government officials have become less responsive. 
because the residents that insist on their rights have all left the community. Street lights have become a relic of system that worked and the area is less safe because now you have more out of school children and dropouts who have been fortunate enough to discover the game betting structure. Festac is no longer as glamorous, as honorable, and we are all moving to the glorified villages called Ibejileki Anaja. Soon, all those people we left behind in Festac will make more money and see the lights in Leki, and they will also relocate to these glorious villages. At that time, where do we move to? Then the cycle repeats itself. Standard of education would plummet. Local government becomes less responsive. Street lights will stop working and the area will become totally unsafe. To prevent this impending invasion of Leki Aja Axis, all we needed to do was to support the new entrants in Festac to prevent that disaster of a future which has been foretold. We need to stop existing in our community and start living in it. We need to be intentional with our contribution to the development of our community. Support a school, support a child, look out for your neighbor, let the fence in your house stand for protection only and not a symbol of pride or separation by class. You don't need to care about Nigeria, care about yourself enough to ensure that you are safe and comfortable. And you cannot be safe and comfortable if your neighbor isn't safe and comfortable. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That felt more like a, you know, like a, in an Independence Day speech. Exactly. <laughs> you know, for me, I, the way I would choose to look at your advocacy mm. is that Nigerians have always assumed that class or or the proper way of doing things is yeah. in a location. It's not in a location. And that's why we always have these issues. You have mm. the same situation happening in um, places like in Abuja, yeah. where you say, okay, we move to this. Local Goma used to be quiet and it's a settled place. Mm. It's now become a jam-packed hype yeah, of activities. Yeah. Games Village used to be quite the place. It's becoming something else. And that is because we do not have any orientation exactly on how places should be run. Mm. We have no system. And if you've ever question anything in Nigeria, you'd understand our biggest problem is maintenance. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. True. Yeah. Very true. And it cuts across board. Yeah. Every area, maintenance is a big issue. Yeah. Very true. Um, and I also think probably in addition to that would probably be the value system that we actually mm. have within our society where, um, like you mentioned, everyone is thinking of himself and himself only in case where he's not even thinking that the actions of my neighbor is going to yeah. affect me. Yeah. It's going to affect my children. It's going to affect my grandchildren. I mean, that fact that there's no emphasis on the fact that we are in a community. You cannot live outside your community. You mm. have to ensure that you protect your community in order for your children. Because, I mean, one day we'll live here, we'll die. Yeah. Our children, our grandchildren have to benefit from whatever money or wealth that we have accumulated, accumulated over yeah. the years. And That's they can true. only get it if they live in a safe community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of two things that I really pulled out from there. All right. And the first being, you know, you, you, you build yourself this gilded cage, this gilded prison, high walls. Yeah. You step outside, oh, you see it's poverty. It's poverty, yes. yeah. Like, I, I have never been able to understand that. You think it's going to protect you. If mm. everything goes down, they're going to be, you're the one, they're going to chop fists. It doesn't take so long it, to pull it, down the fence. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying there is so on it in terms of engage with the community. Yeah. Know the different people. Yes, there are people who are neighbors like you who are middle class or mm -hmm. whatever, but there's other people who are in that community. Do you know any of them? That's it. Do you engage any of them? Mm -hmm. Do you guys, you know, interact? Because a community is more than just what's inside your compound. True, true. The second thing I would say is that it's bigger than what you said. Hmm. Look at climate change, right? Yeah. What you said is like the micro, micro story of the oh. bigger story. Hmm. If we look at climate change, if we're looking at what is going to happen in the future, right? We're planning for these communities. Yeah. But if you say, okay, let's not make Festac Town the subject matter, but let's look at climate change. Climate change, right? Yeah. It's the same story, but on a bigger scale. 
you haven't the government local government i don't blame federal government this is local government local. Sure. doesn't engage with the community at a local level mm. to to educate because it really is about value systems as ruth mm. said and education in those days uh, this is not the first time we're doing hand washing program right <laughs> yeah. in those days that was standard mm. about basic cleanliness about keeping your environment True. clean you know do yeah. not litter you know keep lagos clean and they would have Hi. these programs about yes. dental about brushing mm. teeth yes. about washing hands these were instituted these were every day this was part of the of government life those are the and days government and the people were you exactly know, working and this is something obviously Kunle, this is your your side that is so important to work at the local government level because all these points that you make is really served from there mm. and it's not and we can't just look at it as oh just reaching out to the grassroots no local government also has to reach out to the middle class mm. and class. and above yes because they're also part of that community, community. and have yeah. a responsibility sure. because sure. everybody yeah. is is um contributing whether it's good or bad yeah and yeah. so you need to gauge all the community. Mm. You know, there's this lie, you know, especially since we're talking about the government, everybody say politics is local, which means you, you should go to the grassroots, go mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. grassroots. So that's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, politics is local just simply means mm -hmm. your constituents should be able to have access to you, mm -hmm. whether high, rich or low. So, um, yeah, we all know I just moved to Lagos and then I passed by one police barracks and there were okay, posters yeah. of the local mm -hmm. government, there were people running for local government chairman on it. And that barracks, I think, is the worst thing I've seen in it's the world. It's terrible. I've been to places, but I almost had a heart attack looking mm. at that barracks. And, 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 and you see, like, like what you're saying, which is part of, it dovetails into what we had, what, with the presentation I made is, I met somebody who stays in one of these um, estates in Lekki. And you know, I was telling him about a project we have for communities. I want to raise funds for police and stuff. He looked at me and laughed, and he said, in their community, they actually take care of the police in that area. And as a result, the police is very, very committed to securing the area. And that is what we're not doing. Mm -hmm. We rather complain about everything. Mm -hmm. We are not helping teachers. We are not helping police. We are not helping doctors. Mm -hmm. All we do is complain. And these people too are like us, they complain. So from whence come up my help? Mm -hmm. But well, up next is Ruth. Stay tuned. <laughs>